We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thanks again, everyone, so much for joining us today. My name is Erin Schwartz, and I'm the B2B Marketing Manager at iHire. And I would like to welcome you to today's webinar on talent pipelining, the secret to smarter and faster hiring. In a moment, I'll turn it over to our speaker, Jason Hayes, VP of Employer Sales at iHire. Since 2006, Jason has progressed through numerous positions at iHire and has kept his finger on the pulse of market changes and trends affecting job seekers as well as hiring professionals. Jason has been instrumental in building and sustaining iHire's own workplace culture of excellence, innovation, and growth and serves as a trusted resource for his team as well as iHire's clients for finding the right talent. A couple of things before we get started. We'll answer attendee questions at the end of our presentation, but please feel free to submit questions at any time using the Q&A tool at the bottom of your screen. And remember to keep an eye out tomorrow for a follow-up email with a recording of the webinar. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jason. Hey, thanks, Aaron. Uh, happy to be here, glad to be here. Uh, pipelining is something that I hold closely. We've been doing it here at iHire for years. Uh, before it really had the label of pipeline and I talked to clients every week every month and I kind of learned best practices so I'm so I'm eager to share those and I promise that once we're done here uh, you'll have some specific tactics that you can go implement right away that's going to make your life better pipelining brings efficiency to recruiting whether you're in HR or a hiring manager talent pipelining will allow you to hire better faster, which every organization needs and wants. We're going to touch on differences between industry to industry, uh, size of company, uh, location of your company. There's nuances to pipelining everywhere. So think about your situation as we as we walk through this presentation uh, and what you can take away and implement, you know, what makes sense to you. Uh, there's going to be a lot within pipelining. So if you're not pipelining right now, start small and grow it. Uh, if you already are and you're just looking to iterate and become better, we'll get into some of those as well. We're gonna talk about just the basics of pipelining, different scenarios and sources for pipelining, the benefits of it, um, how to build your pipeline, and then the best practices for keeping your talent pipeline engaged. So first, talent pipelining basics. Just a couple quick definitions here. A talent pipeline is a pool of engaged candidates who are ready and willing and able to fill open positions. Talent pipelining is a proactive approach to recruiting that involves building relationships with qualified, engaged, passive candidates who can quickly fill future roles, uh, making your entire recruiting process more efficient. In, in business, we always talk about preventing fires, don't put out the fires. And to me, pipelining to recruiting is exactly that. Uh, you're preventing uh, gaps in hiring uh, before, they ever, before they ever happen, right? So, you know, there's a lot of examples here at iHire of uh, pipelining success stories. And I'll go over three. Um, you know, it was, it was three years ago, we were looking to hire in, in our sales division and we had a lot of really good applicants and we only had positions for, we only had one position. Um, and we made the offer to one and another candidate uh, got through the final stages and she was great candidate, but we didn't offer her the role. But we pipelined her, we stayed in touch with her. Um, and then a year later, when we looked to hire again, we contacted her and we were able to fill that position right away. And we'll get into the details of how we stayed in contact and what we did to nurture that relationship. Uh, we have an, another employee in sales who ended up leaving iHire. Uh, she wanted to move back home to where she was from. As Aaron said, we're, uh, most of our sales staff is in Angola, Indiana. She wanted to head back west to where she was at. And then two years later, she moved back uh, to our location. We had stayed in contact over the time. Um, and at that time, when, uh, when another position opened up, we had somebody that we were familiar with and then we could just bring in and really speed up the process. Um, and, and then another example in our, in our marketing team, 
Um, once again, multiple very qualified people where we only had one position. Uh, our silver medalist, as we like to call them, uh, we stayed in contact with her, actually gave her some freelance work where she did some work for us and we became, we got to know each other even better. And then when a role opened up, we knew exactly what we were getting at that time and we, we brought her on board. So those are three examples um, of very many of, of pipelining and how it can work and how it can, uh, you know, speed up your process. So next thing I want to get into is pipelining scenarios. The first scenario, as I talked about a little bit earlier, is your silver medalist. Um, we do a lot of interviewing. It's not like there's only, when we have one role open, that there's only one good candidate. At least here at iHire, we talk about we have two or three very qualified people. We'd be happy with any of them, but we only have room for one. So the one or two that we'd be really happy with, that's your silver medalist. Um, if you had two positions, would you have hired that person? If the answer is yes, you, you know, it's super important to stay in contact with them um, over time to nurture that relationship so that if you have another position um, open up, uh, you have that pipeline candidate. And again, we'll get into details of, of how to engage that pipeline. Another one is a boomerang, as I talked about earlier. We have employees leave for various reasons. Um, you know exactly the type of work that they produce. Stay in contact with them. Those, those above average performers, those ones that you feel bad when they leave, uh, you'd be surprised how many come back. Here at iHire, it's happened multiple times uh, where individuals have left for different reasons. Uh, and we welcome them back um, because we know that they're a great employee. You have consultants and vendors is another great uh, resource. Now this isn't about poaching. Uh, this is about staying connected. Individuals change jobs. So they may be a consultant or a vendor for you. Maybe it was a year ago, or maybe they are right now. And then a year or two from now, they may be a great option or a great employee for you. They know how you work, you know how they work. Um, so stay in contact with those folks. You have current employees. This is really for your larger businesses where you can have some career progression, right? Within, within your own walls. Um, and it's about promoting from within or cross training, uh, for other roles. Um, so, so we're always thinking about that. Referrals is another great way. Who do you know? Who does your staff know? Um, maybe it'd be a former colleague who just got laid off, uh, could be a good role for your organization. Um, so always bringing in your referrals. A lot of times we think about referrals after we post that job position, right? And it's an open rack that we're trying to fill. You can get referrals for pipelining. It's a way to, again, engage them, get to know them, um, make it easier when you do have that open position that becomes available. Interns, if, if, if you do have interns, um, that's really what pipelining is. Maybe we haven't labeled it as pipelining. We have an intern that comes in over the summer to, to help us and, and we could teach them as well and looking to see is there a fit next year when they, when they graduate school. And if, if there is a fit, we need to stay in contact um, with them over time and it makes the makes for an easy transition and then young talent still in school you know sometimes that's before interns but I've had you know some clients that have told me some of their some of their best employees is pipelining when they go out to a restaurant maybe and they get great service a lot of times those are kids in school working hard they're going to school full-time and they're they have a they have a job that they're working you know we hear from the you know the the younger generation you know some of my clients talk about you know the work ethic and and you know how, how do we identify that well somebody that's working while they're going through school that is work ethic and if they can do it with a smile on their face and they can they can give you a good experience how do we fit that person uh into your organization and how do we stay connected with them? 
so it's really about being creative when you when you think about pipelining and in those sources of pipelining because really what it comes down is to the benefits of it right and so one of the main benefits is hiring faster and you can hire faster because you've stayed in contact right think about um the silver medalist somebody that's already gone through your whole interview process and then you're looking to hire again it may be six months or a year down the road where you're hiring again we've also had horror stories i hope none of you have gone through this but where somebody accepts your offer and they ghost you they don't even show up on day one well if you've been pipeline those silver medalists it's easier to get them right back into the fold and fill that position with with that silver medalist so the timing of it can be much much different as well um, you're going to optimize your recruiting resources and costs right because if you don't have to uh, pay a job board to post a job or spend all the time going through resumes and doing the interview you know the cost is really our time right whether we're a hiring manager or in, or in hr if we're not spending all the time recruiting what do we spend our time in and what's the benefits that we're driving for, for our organization with that. It can strengthen your employer brand. Now we're going to get into this more later, but as you build your pipeline and engage with potential talent, uh, you're also building your brand and you're you know, treating those pipeline candidates and nurturing them. That's going to reflect what, what they think about um, your brand and what they're going to be saying to their friends or their colleagues. Think about an intern. Um, you stay connected and they're excited about potentially working for you and then you, you eventually offer them a position and then they're really excited about that. They're telling all of their classmates, all of their schoolmates about your organization, about how great it is. And if you can remember graduating for college and your first job, how excited you were and, and what you said about that employer, it's all going to be positive. So it's just a compounding effect um, when you when you do pipelining the right way. You're going to attract higher quality hires. Um, again, if you can give them some freelance work on a silver medalist, you're going to see some of that work. As good as we like to do interviewing, we've all made bad hires. Um, we really haven't been able to see those individuals work in some capacity out at our jobs right now not every job you can do that but some that you can and it's looking at it um, or like the consultant they know your culture um, you know their personality and is it going to get it be a fit um, so those are two examples of the you know higher quality hires and then you're going to onboard uh, more rapidly in some cases um, again with the it, it could be a boomerang or an intern, somebody that's worked for you um, before, um, staying in contact with them. And when you hire them, maybe it'll take a two month onboarding cycle down to two weeks um, or something like that. And then there's there's obviously huge benefits to, to that more rapid onboarding. So those are some of the benefits that we have, but how, how do we build our talent pipeline. So I'm going to go over five proven tips on how to build um, your talent pipeline. So the first is determine how you're going to uh, track manage your pipeline. So this can get super sophisticated. Um, and I would, you know, if, it, if you're getting just started off, I would recommend usually some type of informal tracking. Maybe it's in a spreadsheet. Uh, maybe you keep folders and outlook with resumes um, you know just something to uh, store those silver medalists maybe some of the resources you're using have some kind of easier applicant tracking uh, management within it um, so that you do know who they are and then you can see when when was the last time that you reached out to them uh, or it could be a really formal approach um, and that's really with a, uh, like an ATS or a Canon management tool. Um, you know, many recruiting platforms have that. Um, and how are you going to manage that pipeline? Some people 
the sophisticated put them into uh, automatic or automated sequences emails. Um, most of the clients that that I'm de that that we talk to do more of an informal thing, um, especially at the levels that you have. It really depends on. Um, what industry you're serving, how many people are in your pipeline, how much time is it taking um, to nurture that pipeline. You can identify uh, potential hires. Um, so this is a little bit more on the sophisticated side, but you know, for, of course, what type of roles you need to fill or do you anticipate needing to fill in six to 12 months? Who are you trying to reach? Uh, what is your ideal candidate persona? You know, all of these questions, it could just come down to, I need a registered nurse in Austin, Texas, you know? So it can be that simple. Um, and depending on the role, you might even get into more specifics of, you know, like an ideal candidate persona. Uh, we just had a, you know, conversation with a business, a rather large one, uh, and they were going back in contacting applicants who interviewed back in 2017. So they had that repository. They had never engaged with them, but they still had it. So even if you've done, haven't pipelined before, if you have record keeping of who did you interview, how far did they get through, why did you disqualify them? That could be a really good start to build your pipeline. You've already built it. It's just about executing on it at this point, right? So another thing is just trying a variety of online sourcing tools. Resume databases are really good. It's a good place to start connecting with passive talent. Um, these are individuals that may not be looking for a job right now, uh, but they could be looking for a job in two to three years. It kind of depends on your industry is, is the turnover rate. But generally speaking, every two to three years, somebody may be looking for their new career opportunity, whether it's advancement within their own business um, or going somewhere else to, to get those skills. So look at that time frame. Um, social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, you can connect with them. Groups and forums is another really good way um, especially online during during the pandemic. There's not a whole lot of gatherings in today's world. And, and also I'd tell you to get your teams involved. It doesn't have to be you in HR or as a hiring manager, uh, but it's your staff that can get involved in those, um, you know, online groups and build those relationships. Um, so think about it as a, as like a, a company-wide effort, not just a one-person effort trying to get through this. Get involved in the community, right? So we recommend a spectrum of diverse groups um, to really promote diversity within within your organization. Going to diverse groups, you're going to you're going to naturally find that diversity. Uh, it's a way just to meet people organically and build relationships. And as you build those relationships, you may find that they'd be a good fit in your organization in a, in a particular role. Specific networking events, um, you know, virtual events, um, could be through schools, universities, you could host your own um, if you're into that. Um, and just standing out as an employer, meeting new people, um, which really takes us to, you know, the fifth step which is work on building a strong employer brand. Talked about that a little bit earlier about the benefits of that, but it's a great way to win passive talent. Um, a lot of the, the, the first four that I talked about are proactive steps for you to take. Building a strong employer brand is one where pipeline or candidates will come to you, they'll raise their hand, they'll say, I want to work for you. I see you in the community. I see your thought leadership online. That's the place that I want to work. Um, and you'd be amazed about how many people will come to you, give you your, their resume and say, I want to come work for you. Reminds you of like the 1990s before the internet where people would actually come in and say, I, I want to work here, right? Employer branding is a huge topic in itself. We won't get into to details here. Uh, we covered employer branding uh, in detail in last month's webinar. So I'd say check out uh, 
for more advice um, there. Um, but remember, you know, building your, your employer brand is an ongoing effort. So it's not that we do it and we put it to a side, it's continued effort. So those are the five uh, proven tips. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, when I talk to our clients, they say, this sounds great, but how do I actually do it? What are the actual tactics to, to make this happen, right? And this is where, this is really where all of the meat is. So um, best practices, one is um, bring, bring them into your recruitment funnel. Do you have a recruitment funnel? Um, could be an email marketing cadence. Larger businesses are gonna have that. They're, you know, you treat your pipeline candidates just as you would a customer of yours and stay connected so that you can inform, inform them. If you don't have that, you could easily have them follow you on social. Do you have a LinkedIn? Do you have a Facebook page? Where are you at to make it easy for them to engage in your brand and engage in your content? Um, some really simple stuff there and then just commit to uh, posting things uh, within your social network. You can, uh, you know, reach out on, on personal notes. So it's about being human, right? Sometimes we live in this machine world and, and we can see that. So be human to them, right? Uh, you'll know a lot of the, you know, the sources there, whether it was an intern or a silver medalist, a boomerang, we can go down the list. You've built somewhat of a personal relationship with them already. It's okay to maintain that during pipelining. So you can acknowledge a birthday, maybe a milestone or a holiday. You may know topics that they really care about, right? Do they have a favorite football team? Um, are they, do they play a musical instrument? you know, to connect with them when real things are happening or where do they live? Is there some type of natural disaster that's happening and reach out and make sure that they're okay. You really talk to them as, as though they're friends because that's what our colleagues are, right? Um, they're friends. Stay connected, um, you know, on social media. So as I mentioned, LinkedIn and Facebook are very good to do that. Doesn't have to be through your organization's page if your organization has that page, that's great. Um, if they do, or if not, uh, it's really good. That's gonna be a probably a company policy, um, but you can stay engaged uh, with them, sharing your content, reaching out to them. It's a great way to stay uh, top in mind. And say check in regularly. Maybe occasionally might be a better, might be a better word, right? We don't wanna uh, be overbearing. Um, an example that I talked about in 2017, a silver medalist. Um, we met up for lunch one time. It was over a year period. And six months after we met up for lunch and um, just kind of talked about where she was and where we were. And it was a, it was a way to continue to build that, build that bond. It might just be a simple email or a phone call just to check in, think, see how things are going. Um, maybe give them an update about what the company is doing and maybe some timelines you know, if you think a position may be becoming available in three to six months, say so and see where, see where they're at. You never know when somebody's, you know, looking for that, for that next opportunity. Um, and then offering contract or freelance work. Um, if your, if your role, if your position allows for it, what a great way uh, to really see the type of work that you will get, uh, see how they, uh, react to the feedback that you can provide um, to them. It's really just a, a real life experience um, that is so much more impactful than just an interview, right? And even if it doesn't work out where you don't hire them, they're able to provide some value to you. You're obviously able to provide some value there. So it's still a win-win situation. Um, so why not have a win-win situation where then it can even form into some a, a bigger win? And that's what really what we're all about here and at iHire is helping become more efficient. So some final takeaways uh, that just to share, you know, talent pipeline, it's a proven tactic. Uh, it's efficient and it's effective. Think about it like almost like inventory control. If you're in a restaurant, 
you don't want to run out of a particular ingredient, but you also don't want to have uh, so much that it's that it's spoiling, right? So it's about kind of just in time recruiting. Remember that candidates from your pipeline they come in they come from a variety of places, uh, so kind of cast a wide net, figure out what works for you, and in um, each role, uh, each industry is going to be different. So all of those sources we talked about. They're probably not all applicable to you. They may be, um, but there might only be a few, and that's o and that's okay. Uh, having a strong employer brand is is going to help your pipeline. That makes sense, right? If you if your employer brand is not good, it's going to be hard to keep people in your pipeline. The stronger it is, the easier it is to keep them engaged and keep them excited about being a part of your team. You know, make sure you engage and nurture your potential hires. Um, about kind of selling your company as a great place to work. Um, and that's just staying connected. It's about feedback. It's about communication. You know, some employees, some of the most challenging times as employees when you don't get any feedback from your employer. Um, I've had, I've had a job like that and I'd rather, I, I, we want feedback, right? It's the same as a pipeline. Stay connected with me, reach out, even if it's just once a month, um, you know, and you're building that connection. That's gonna, that's gonna give me as a potential uh, employee an idea of how your organization is run, and that's what people want. Avoid making false promises, right? So we still need to be genuine, authentic. Of and we don't want to paint some rosy picture that isn't there. And I'd say finally, whether it's work, life, pipelining, anything, just remember to be kind uh, to everyone. You, you never know, you know, in a pipelining sense, who could be a, a great employee, who could be a great asset to your company, somebody that you that would make coming to work more enjoyable for you. Um, so be kind and that'll pay off in um, time and time again uh, as you as you move along. So that's uh, um, I think we're, we're on to the Q&A. Um, session. So appreciate everybody's time. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, and thank you to all who submitted questions. Um, if any more come to mind, please continue to submit them uh, via the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, and we will do our best to answer everyone's. All right, Jason. If I have a potential hire from my pipeline in mind to fill an open position, do I still have to put out a formal job ad? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, it's a question that we receive um, pretty frequently here. So really comes down to a business to business decision um, and what's your policy there. We here at iHire, we, we've hired uh, pipeline candidates and uh, without putting a rec open, you know, particularly for those that have already gone through the whole interview process, they were a silver medalist um, or a boomerang um, in times where, where we've made a decision to, to hire without putting one up. Um, in some cases we have. So I don't, I don't think there's any requirement to do it. But again, I would, I would talk to internal stakeholders at your company and figure out what, uh, what, what, what everybody is comfortable with um, on that topic at, at your business. What if I offer a role to someone in my pipeline and they decline the opportunity and are no longer interested in my organization? Yeah, um, well, you better go to plan B, I guess. Um, it's gonna happen, right? Pipelining isn't some kind of unicorn out there that solves all of our problems. We're gonna pipeline individuals. We may offer a position, they're just not ready to move. We've had that feedback where you know, somebody just took a job two months ago and they don't want to leave that job for, for this one. And it's just, it's just unfortunate timing, but that's going to happen, right? That doesn't mean pipelining's bad, um, but you still can, you know, you still can pipeline that individual for those certain, like that situation and others. Um, but do you have somebody else in your pipeline that you might be able to, to bring up? That's why it's nice to have more than just one person, right? Don't put all of your eggs in one basket um, so that you do have a short list if you will, but if, but if you don't, then you're going to have to go 
into that reactive mode uh, and post your position and, and do business as normal from, from a recruiting perspective. Can I pipeline someone I fired or terminated? Absolutely, absolutely you can. Um, you know, some people may wonder why you would, um, but hey, we're, we're in COVID, right? This pandemic, I know of a, a lot of businesses that are pipelining people they laid off. Just because somebody was laid off does not make them a bad employee. In fact, they could be a very, very good one. Uh, that business um, is just could just be suffering significantly um, right now. So keep that in mind too, outside of pipelining. If you're interviewing, looking at resumes, do not, please, do not disqualify anybody for being laid off in this time. Um, and if you did have to lay somebody off and, and it could be a very good employee, stay connected with them, put them in a pipeline. We all hope that we can get out of this pandemic together and, and things will get back to normal. Every industry, the, that timing is going to be different. Um, but yeah, absolutely, you can you can pipeline those individuals. Do you have any suggestions on how to build a recruitment funnel, and do and does iHire provide that type of service? Yeah, so so great question. So the recruitment funnel, you know, it depends on where you want to start start it at, right? So do I have? Do you know how many people applied to it? to your job and then you know your funnel to uh, everybody has their own has their own recruitment funnel so um so think about yours so i'll just give you a, as an example but again um for the individual to ask this question think what what makes sense for you so it might be a phone screen and then through that phone screen it could be a panel interview and then after the first panel interview there might be a second panel interview so I know that's a that's a typical cadence there. So you can build that funnel to see how many people am I interviewing, how many people are getting to a phone screen and 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 all the way down, right? All the way to hired. And then for those individuals that are in your pipeline that didn't get hired, but you still are interested, that silver medalist, put them in, put them into a pipeline. Um, think about it almost as two different funnels, and you put them into a pipeline funnel that's keeping them engaged and then you can put them back in. They don't have to start all the way at the beginning to say, I need to apply to the job again. They already applied and went through, you know, three interviews. I know some businesses that do six interviews. Well, to make that person start all the way at the top doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, it might, if the roles really changed or it's been five years, there, there can be situations, but you should be able to plug them back into that funnel. Um, Yes, at iHire, we, we, have, we have that where you can track, um, we can customize, um, you know, that applicant tracking and kind of track that funnel to see how, to see how we're doing and then move uh, candidates, applicants into a pipeline um, where you can easily nurture, easily nurture those. And then if you're you know, in the future, you're looking at, um, you know, who interviewed, when I posted that job six months or a year ago, you can easily access that. Um, whether you're doing it, I hire somewhere else. I talked about earlier, somebody's going back to 2017 of people they interviewed and didn't hire. So it's likely that you have that repository. Um, yeah, I think that's a good place to start. Do you have any suggestions for cleared candidate sourcing, like candidates with DOD clearances? Yeah, so that that's a you know that's a tough one. Um, so I'd really like to ask that person a couple more more questions to kind of kind of dig in into it. So I'd um, you know really encourage you to send me an email as far as what what is that role. There's so many like resources out there, but if are you what is the position that that you're trying to fill and and then what resource would you would you use or utilize for that? Um, so, um, the other thing, without knowing that, what you could do, um, you ha I assume, just assuming this is in a new role, it's a role that you have within your organization. Our current, our current staff is just a great resource. So where do they go? You know, thinking about forums or groups, um, what, 
groups are they a part of? Um, you know, what, where did they go to school? What's their network? Like, can we start, can, can we use the resources that we have internally to help us understand where to go and where to find these? Um, so I would say that's your first step. But if it's some external resources, yeah, shoot me an email if you would, just about the role that you're looking for. And I can, I can send you a few resources that might be helpful for your situation. All right, that's all we have. Um, thank you again so much, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, if you think of any other questions you may want to ask, feel free to shoot Jason an email, uh, jason.hayes at ihire.com. Keep an eye out for an email with a recording of this webinar, as well as a reminder of next month's webinar, um, uh, which is not on the importance of talent pipelining. I believe it's um, going to be on um, hiring during this crazy time and if you need any outplacement services. Uh, that's going to be at the end of October. And then um, at any point, uh, you can always feel free to look at uh, additional talent pipelining resources in our Employer Resource Center. Thanks again, everyone. Stay safe and have a great day. Thank you.